the airfield in Emden. Micah's adventure starts here. While in the helicopter, she has to wear a special survival suit. Here we go. Micah's pilots are Lucas and Kai. They need a good 25 minutes for the 40 kilometers out to the wind farm. Dozens of wind farms are being built out at sea. A world of its own, consisting of steel and electronics. By 2020, 15% of our energy is to be produced in the North and Baltic seas. Has the wind farm increased the air traffic? Yes, enormously. You have to imagine it like a huge construction site out there. The workers are there for several weeks, and considering there's several hundred, maybe thousands of people, someone is always going home. Like a city in water? Yeah, that's how you have to think of it. This is such a unique view. You can see the North Sea Islands, you can see the shipping and even some wind turbines. This is overwhelming, exciting and beautiful. Touchdown on the Sea Challenger. For three days, Micah will accompany the men here while they work. One of the assembly workers, Maurice Gert, is already waiting for them. Helicopter's gone. I've got my warm jacket. Here's your helmet. Hey. Thank you. Hello. So I have to wear this? Absolutely. Safety first. This is crazy. How high are these? They're about 100 meters. 100 meters? What happens if it gets windy? Not much, really. They're secured with pretty strong bolts. So, if we get high waves in the next few days, they'll easily be able to withstand that. These are the blades? Yes, three per system. They're pretty massive. How long are these things? One blade 75 meters. They're currently the largest in the world that can be set offshore. What does a blade weigh? 28 tons. Are they hollow inside? Yes, if we were to fill them now, they'd be too heavy. We wouldn't be able to get them to the top of the nacelle. Then the whole thing would collapse. Can I look inside? Sure, let's go. You're not afraid of heights? No. All right then. And up we go, 40 meters above sea level. Wow, you can't see the end of this. No, it's a bit dark back there. Hello? Awesome, totally awesome. This is huge. Yeah, the blade is four and a half meters in diameter. And these screws will be used to screw it together later? They go into the top of the nacelle, into the hub. And these are the bolts. They're screwed into them afterwards. The wind turbine must be firmly anchored in the seabed. For this purpose, a steel tube is driven about 35 meters into the ground. The tower is then placed on top of this steel tube. Only then can the nacelle and the rotor blades be assembled. A single turbine, tower, nacelle and blades, weighs almost a thousand tons. Standing here, I feel so small. Yes, I get that. The size is enormous, only we don't see it anymore because we see it every day. It doesn't stand out so much anymore. We have the utmost respect for it. We have to. It's a good thing too, otherwise you can't survive out here. Mistakes can have serious consequences. The Code Wind Wind Farm contains around a thousand wind turbines, each with a capacity of six megawatts. Together, this amounts to 600 megawatts, equivalent to the output of half a nuclear power plant. Strong winds and high waves make the construction of the gigantic wind turbines a technical challenge. The turbines can only be built under optimal conditions. That's why every time window needs to be used. On the ship you work 24 hours a day, which means there are always people in the cabins who are sleeping, so you have to be a bit quiet. But Bernd has to work for night shift now, so I'll go get him out of his cabin. Bernd Held is on board as a technician. Can I come in? Of course you can. 
Do you feel at home in here? Well, what does homely mean? We live in a limited space. You have to make yourself as comfortable as possible. Of course, there are things you miss around here, things you have at home. For example? A living room. <laughs> it's just past 5.30. What's coming up next for you? Dinner, and then from 5.30 there's the prep meeting. Our meal times until half past six, the same in the morning. Right, let's eat then. It'll be a long night. There are 60 men on board, mostly crane drivers and fitters, besides the ship's crew. One shift lasts two weeks. Bernd and his colleagues are on the ship for 14 days without interruption. Not much else happens here except sleeping, working and eating. Thank you. Thank you. How's that for a breakfast? Plenty of meat. Yeah, it's not so great if you have a breakfast like this, but, well, you have to eat something. Here on board you can eat 24 hours a day. Twice a day you get warm food, but that's what the boys need for their work. It takes a lot of energy and it's delicious. The Sea Challenger sets course for the next foundation. From the bridge, the ship is steered by a precise navigation system. Second officer Karol Volk can maneuver the ship to within 10 centimeters of the previously calculated position. Once the ship is stationary, we will be jacked up. How does that work? This is my final position. This is the foundation. As soon as I tell my work colleagues, they start operating the legs. They have four levers there and they practically ram the legs into the mud and push forward. So the ship pushes itself into the ground? Yes, the legs are pushed in in two diagonals with up to 8,000 tons. And this is what it looks like. When the ship is in position, the legs go down. All engines are switched off and the so-called jacking up begins. The ship pushes itself out of the water. The 132 meter long sea challenger then rises up. The ship becomes a working platform that stands firmly on four legs. We are going up, but will it be exactly straight? Well, as you can see from the colour here, the leg can also be a little crooked due to the nature of the ground. That's why the paint is a little grazed here. How fast does it go up? So the leg is now going up 40 centimetres a minute in this mode. So quick! It's loud! Crazy! Finally, the Sea Challenger is jacked up. Bernd Held, the heavy lifting supervisor, supervises the construction of the plant. We have docked on and the crane is standing. What happens now? What happens now? The wind is very high right now, so we wait for the time window to pull. And as soon as the wind starts to drop again, our guys are ready and we carry on. It's about the tower. We're going to pull the tower, which weighs about 500 tons. I can't see the end of the towers from here, and the boys take that with their giant toys. And take that... Well, it's not that simple. The men need a safe time window of three hours to place the tower precisely on the foundation. Huge. It is impossible to put into words what is happening on this ship. The tower is almost 100 meters high and weighs a good 400 tons. Only when the bolts between the tower and the foundation are tightly screwed is the tower stable enough to mount the nacelle and the blades. These are our spanners. Tulotoy. This is a big spanner. 
Exactly 80 millimeters wide for our bolts for the connection between tower and foundation. This is huge, just like everything on this ship. Two in the morning, break time. Oh, it's nice and warm. Would you like a coffee? Please. Yeah, the long nights are exhausting. Yes, it's really exhausting. What about you? Do you have problems with fatigue? Well, the problem is when you come in from the outside. If you stay outside, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Maike is getting tired. Bernd Helt has been working under these conditions for about four years. You look fitter than me. Well, I'm used to it. That's the difference. At the beginning, it's hard. The waiting times get to you a bit. There's nothing you can do. Exactly right. It's like now. You can't do anything while our colleagues are bolting things together. At three o'clock at night, the nacelle with the generator is up next. The heart of the whole turbine. The generator converts the power of the wind into usable energy. At dawn, they get the go-ahead to assemble the individual rotor blades. Maurice Geert needs a safe window of time to bring the blades to the top. Fortunately, the weather forecast looks good. For the next seven hours, there should be almost no wind. Carefully, Maurice attaches the carrying belts and secures the machine. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Still awake? Yes, just about. <laughs> you still look quite fit. It's fascinating. You control this whole huge machine with this remote control. Don't you get nervous when you push these expensive things around with this thing? Yes, but you shouldn't worry about it too much. I get nervous when it's too windy, but today the weather's perfect for working. That means, down here, you're working blind. Yeah, I depend on what my colleagues up there tell me. I can see how the blade is coming in, if it's at the right angle. But in the end, they give me the instructions from up there, because it's all about millimeters. Pinpoint accuracy. Each blade weighs a good 30 tons. Everyone is very focused right now. The guys have to lift these huge rotor blades out of the shaft. They're hanging in really big loops and they control everything from here, talking to each other. And there's no room for mistakes now. That would be very bad. The blades are lifted as if in slow motion. Again, the wind mustn't increase or the installation at a height of 120 meters would be at risk. Maurice also works in shifts, 14 days at sea, 14 days at home. As you can see, we still have a bit of work to do. The foundations are everywhere, waiting for us to stick a few towers on them. Yes, but I mean, this is an incredibly exciting workplace. Yeah, it is, absolutely. I can't imagine doing anything else. Work in the morning, back home at night. It's not for you. No. Nah. No, nah, 14 days is great and also compatible with the family. Then it's more fun. What do they say when you have to go? They're a bit sad, of course, but I'll be back. Maika must now take her leave from the men of the North Sea. I am really impressed with the concentration, the precision with which the guys out here build these huge facilities. And everything to make sure that in the future we can still charge our mobile phones. And I think the North Sea is one of the most beautiful and exciting places to work in the world.